Greetings, everyone. My name is Donzel Jones, and I'm from Ruach Adonai Messianic Congregation in Thousand Palms, California. As I said before, Ruach means breath. Adonai means God. Messianic means Messiah, as a Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. All right, let's get going. This is our weekly prophecy update for May the 29th, 2020. As I've always said before, prophecy, my friends, is not meant to scare us. But it's meant to encourage us, particularly, hallelujah, glory to your name, Father, in the times that we are living, because we're looking for that blessed hope of the Lord Yeshua coming down to get his bride, the remnant, the true followers of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So here we go. Guys, I had too many stories again this week. I can't keep up. Things are on warp speed. We are just getting so, so excited as we're nearing that time of the Lord gathering his saints. But here are a few prophetic stories from RaptureReady.com. Number one, Iran faces worst locust plague in 50 years. Recent attacks unprecedented. Iran is under the worst desert locust outbreak in the past 50 years. And for a second year in a row, compared with last year, the swarms of desert locusts are much larger, and it is safe to claim that the recent attacks are unprecedented, officials say. Do your homework on Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, in which Persia, Iran is mentioned against, to going against Israel, and God is going to deal with them. So that kind of has a link here. You, uh, you do your homework, and you out there that know the prophecies, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Story number two, floods kill 285 affect more than 800,000 in Kenya. Crop loss may lead to food insecurity. As we know, Eastern Africa is getting hit by the second wave of locusts that is a lot larger than this first wave. So pray for our brothers and sisters there in Africa. Uh, number three story, severe flooding hits Nicaragua. Life-threatening flash floods expected across Central America into the next week. Those are stories that I would suggest that you uh, guys check on your own. But the story that I really want to get to today, this is one that I had pegged at the beginning of the week, and I decided I had knew it. I had to put it on here for the glory of God because his word does not return void. There's a video that's on the internet, particularly an end time prophecy buffer named Jason A. He gives nothing but stories, the news stories. You see the raw footage of these things. And he may put a verse at the end or a verse in the middle. This is one of the headlines from a story that I'm mentioning now that happened this week. A video shows the huge hailstones in the northern Mexican town, which locals called them incredible. The spiky circular Hailstones have been compared to the shape of COVID-19 cells, one social media user called Darlene said. Quote, she then says, yesterday, coronavirus hailstone, God sent it to our home to remind us to stay put. Now, my friends, I'm here to tell you, how much more does God got to do? And God, God is the word, that's bad English, but you think you know what I'm talking about. How much has he got to do to get our attention? It is time for you to come out of your slumber and your sleep as your salvation is more closer than you would have ever thought. Listen to what God's word here. You say, well, is there a precedence about hell? Oh, yes, I would see Exodus and the plagues. But there are some other verses in the Bible which definitely fit in with the story I just shared with you. Listen to this. Job chapter 38, verses 22 through 23. This is a conversation that God was having with Job. He said, have you entered the treasury of snow or have you seen the treasury of hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? How's about this verse? Isaiah 28, 2. Quote, Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, like a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, like a flood of mighty waters, overflowing who will bring them down to the earth with his hands. 
God controls the weather, my friends, and he can do with it as he please to get people's attention. As I said, it is time for us to come out of our slumber if you are not. Now, listen, I'm going to share this with you, my friends. In Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 26, this definitely pertains to these uh, storms that are going on, the flooding worldwide that I didn't even have time to report on. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke 21, 25 through 26. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. We're seeing that take off, my friends. The sea and waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heavens shall be shaken. My friends, God is not a toy. He is not to be messed with. He is the almighty. He loves human beings. The most important thing to him are souls. He says that he wishes that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. And my friend, you don't have to go to hell. In fact, the Bible says that hell was not meant for human beings. It was reserved for Satan and his angels. Before this war started on this planet, in regards to human beings showed up, showing up, there was war in the heavens between God and Satan's angels. The Bible says there was no more room for him. He was kicked out with him and the third angels. Those beings came to earth. Then we show up. Huh? You say, well, what does that got to do with anything? My friend, Satan knows that he cannot hurt God. But one thing he does do, he does do, he goes after his creation. He goes after his creation. But my friends, the time is coming when the Bible says that he will take him and toss him, Satan, in the lake of fire and revelation, the latter parts of revelation, and he's going to be done. My friends, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. You say, well, is there anything that I can do to escape the things that are coming on the earth by which uh, Jesus spoke of in that Luke version, Luke 3, 21 version? Yes, it is, my friends. It's for you to take and repent of your sins. You are a sinner from birth. Until you accept that fact and that there is a savior that came to this earth who died on a cross, took your sin on him to do something he had nothing to do, but because he loves us, he stretched out his arms. The Bible says that he his arms would be out of joints. He joint. He said so many words. Father, forgive them for now that know not what they do. I thirst. Today you will be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your son. Take and Google all of those things I just said, and you will get those actual verses to what I just explained to you. Blueprint. Yes, there is a blueprint for salvation. Romans chapter 10, the apostle Paul spoke to the Romans and he gave, excuse me, a blueprint of how one must be saved. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. My friends, if you out there do not know Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah as your savior, and you want eternal life, something which you didn't even have to pay for. He paid it all at the death on the cross. All you will have to do is repeat these words after me, meet it in your heart. Remember, you're not speaking to me. You're talking to God Almighty. I'm just a mediator, if you will, a go-between, so forth. And uh, repeat these words after me and my friends. Your destiny has changed that quick from eternal damnation to eternal life and heaven with our creator. So if you're ready to do that, I ask that you bow your heads and repeat these words after me. Father God, I come to you now in the name of your son, the name of the Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I confess to you that I am a sinner, that I have went my own way that I have done the things that I wanted to do 
and you have been calling me and calling me and calling me in so many ways, Lord, and I have refused you. But now, Lord, I see who you are, and I ask that you come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Change me. Make me a new creation, Lord, and I will serve you all the days of my life. And it is in the name above all names, your son, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Christ the Messiah of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. That quick, friends. Oh, man, we're going to have a party. My friends, a lot of you may not know, it's called the Lamb Supper. When that rapture happens and that trumpet gets blown and we're out of here, guys, we're going to have the most big feast that any human being will have ever seen. It's called the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. Do your research. All oh, my friends, I am so fired up. I'm so happy that we're seeing all of these prophecies that have been foretold for hundreds of years, some thousands of years, and we are the generation to see them come together and come to pass in which our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, is going to come up, go into Jerusalem, set up his kingdom for a thousand years, then Father God is going to take the keys from him. Father God is going to be all in all. And yes, my friends, that is in the Bible. Do your homework and there will be no more tears for the former things shall not be remembered. My friends, never forget, Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. So what can you do? Give him your all. Accept his free gift and watch and see what he does in your life. And that is our, like the trumpet, our prophecy update for this week, May the 29th. May you have a blessed week and I'll see you all next week.